but one of the things is that I I really wanted to to see you in that fifth <laughs> match. I really, yeah. I real because I I I, I, wanted, really, I, I wanted that too. I literally have no idea. If you could really. <laughs> the metal I have the metal over there oh yeah I didn't bring mine <clears throat> where is your metal at your room it's in the bin the garbage bin <laughs> <laughs> nah that's a joke it is at my room don't yeah. disrespect your metal no, oh no be careful should I uh, do the whole podcast with the the metal on then I should too should I quickly go to my room and pick up the metal no no, no. it's okay No, don't put it on. Just keep it there. Okay, I, I'll put it here next to Mr. Bamminson. Yeah. He's also on the couch with us, of course. It's over here. I don't know if they can see it, but it, it is right there. Mr. Ba- Mr. Bamminson is here. We're all here. Okay, so um, the first episode of the Bamton Experience on tour. On tour. Um, welcome back, guys. Thank you for watching or listening. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And... Um, And yeah, um, last time we talked about that we wanted to up our studio game, mm. and uh, I don't <laughs> think that we can. Um, we clearly did that. Mm, do you think so? Nah. I mean, I don't know. This couch is a. Uh, it's not that comfortable I to think sit in, and it's quite ugly as well. It says a bit about how little impressed I was about your apartment, your new apartment. I think this is an upgrade. You you do. <clears throat> so we, we have a few lamps here and there are some big shadows behind us it's it's not really good to be honest no. but um but as mentioned this is our first episode on the tour um we have arrived in in odense which is uh, where we are going to play the denmark open next week um and uh yeah hans christian we just uh finished the the thomas cup The last episode we did was mainly about the Thomas Cup, so now we have all the answers to our questions and um and not all the answers are like we hoped. They no, would be. no, definitely not. So um, can you do like a, a quick summary, a recap of the Thomas Cup? Indonesia won, China came second, Denmark third, Japan third. And that's basically it. That's all you need to know. Yeah, so thank you guys <laughs> for watching this episode of the Bamtan Experience. <laughs> We um no so no. Uh, yeah obviously it was uh, like I think it was a great tournament I think it had a lot of uh, great matches but uh, the dream final that I think both of us were hoping for uh, didn't happen because uh, we were drawn in the same half as Indonesia and at least I can say for me that was the dream final I wanted to play them in the final uh, now we got to play them in the semi final lost that one in a uh, a tight battle but I think uh, throughout the week they proved to be the better team and uh, they deserve the win against us as well but i think we also showed in that semi-final that we were capable of beating basically any team uh, and if we have been in the final today we're recording this on on sunday evening you're watching it on monday tuesday perhaps anytime uh, but uh, yeah. i hope that it will be be out tomorrow so uh, the day um, after yeah. the final so I think that's, that's what we're uh, going for yeah but we're sitting here sunday evening we just got our medals a few hours back and uh It hurt a little bit watching that final, right? Because yeah, it did for sure. Because um, obviously we would have loved to to pl- to play in that in that final on home soil. Um, and yeah, I don't really know where to start. Um, I have mixed emotions when I think about this uh, this Thomas Cup championship because um, right now the disappointment after losing a, uh, a semi final against Indonesia is still um huge and it's going to sting for a long time i'm pretty sure about that um but at the same time i'm also extremely grateful for for the opportunity to play on 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 home ground and um even more for me because it was in aarhus the city where i'm born and and raised so Mm -hmm. yeah and (laughs) especially that match yesterday yesterday against indonesia the semi-final was Um, absolutely amazing! One of the the craziest experiences that I have had in in this game so far. Um, yeah, I mean these team events really something special. Um, 
and especially on 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 home soil that was absolutely amazing the um, the support from the fans from from the from the danish crowd was insane yesterday mm. um it was a sellout crowd as well full house yeah we full we don't house. see that too often in uh, in danish badminton no no full house and and the match itself was uh very very close um mm. So yeah, the, the 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 crowd was doing a gr- good job. Mm. Um, also, I f- I think that the team we had also did a really good job on on the on the stands, mm. um, cheering for 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 the players on the court. So all in all, it was a really good uh, team match and and a good week for us. Mm. Um, even though we didn't, uh, yeah didn't reach our goal to uh, to to reach the final or, or maybe go on and, and win it but yeah um, i also see it as a great experience in general but i also really have mixed a great badminton experience exactly but i really also have mixed mixed emotions uh, and right now i have to admit that I, i'm more disappointed that i'm that i'm happy uh, it's my third bronze medal uh, and it's obviously always great to get a medal, and uh, I'm proud to be part of uh, one of the best teams in the world. But I'm not as happy about this bronze medal that uh, compared to the first couple of ones uh, I got. Uh, it's it's not what we came for, and th- that that result end result takes away a little bit of the joy for me right now about the experience in 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 general. Uh, but I think when we get it. On at distance at some point after uh, maybe a few weeks or <laughs> a few months, uh, I'm sure I will look back at it as a a great experience. But right now, I'm leaning more towards uh, the disappointing feelings. They they fill me up a little bit more. Um, yeah. But yeah, still really like really grateful that it happened. We've waited so long for this event. We we uh, were meant to play. Uh, played one and a half years ago almost and uh, yeah, it just kept on getting postponed so I'm I'm really grateful it happened and I'm also actually quite happy we didn't play it in October last year because it wouldn't have been with a full crowd and that's definitely a big part of why it was an amazing experience to be on court that we had this uh, full crowd in mm. the, uh, yeah in that semi-final it, it was actually maybe the, the, the first event um, with crowd back right I mean yeah I guess it is we played the Olympics yeah. and that was yeah. without and yeah. so yeah that's true that's it was true. it was yeah phenomenal to have the the fans back in yeah. the and and they will be back for Denmark Open as well they will yeah I don't know if it's sold out but uh, I think they have sold quite a few tickets actually and that's a small arena as well so it doesn't take as maybe, maybe the fans has you know seen enough of that <laughs> for <laughs> for this year yeah I don't know no, I, I, actually, I think honestly I really respect all the volunteers all the uh, staff from the uh, badminton yeah. Denmark administration they have to go straight from Aarhus to Odense and do it all over again for a full week yeah that's quite impressive it's a tough job line yeah. judges and <laughs> they're <laughs> all the same yeah. you think so I think most of them are the same. Okay. Obviously, there's probably some people from Aarhus that help there, and some yeah. people from Aarhus are helping now. But there's a big group that are the same people. My mom was a volunteer. Yeah, that's cool. She was like a security guard, yeah. making sure that. Did she meet Watanabe? She probably did. <laughs> I'm actually. I haven't asked her. You should have set that up. Yeah, I'm going to ask her. Yeah. Um, but I think, of course, as you mentioned, the the. The disappointment right now is is huge and it really stinks and it's a little bit difficult to enjoy the 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 positive things of mm. the of the of the whole tournament and the experience um but it is also i mean we are recording this episode like we lost yesterday <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah, semi-final yeah, yeah. so it's also uh it takes time to it's like a fresh wound it yeah is, it is yeah it is so we are both guys a little bit disappointed today <laughs> and a little bit tired as well because it's uh it's half past ten <laughs> here in the evening, but uh, we want to do this episode right away so we can have it ready for you guys tomorrow. And um, also because I know that there is a lot of Indonesian fans watching my stuff, and, and I know we should that congratulate them. Of course, we should. We will get to that in a second. All right. Um, and I know that they are probably eager uh, to hear something about the Thomas Cup mm. since they 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 won it all. So, but uh, yeah, let's just get into that. Huge congratulations to Indonesia. Um, well deserved. Well deserved. Amazing team, and I, I, I saw them as favorite going into the mm. tournaments. To going into the tournament, mm. uh, I would say. 
two amazing uh, men's doubles. Um, they didn't even play with Asan and Sejuan, right? Yeah, I don't know if Sejuan was injured because he only played against Tahiti. Okay. That was the only match, so okay. I suspect that he was carrying an injury. Yeah, and then of course the the men's singles are mm. really strong with mm. Anthony Ginsing, Jonathan Christie, and then. Uh, Rostavito. Yeah, I remember I asked you in a training shortly before we recorded the f- the last episode and uh, where we were discussing the chances between Denmark and Indonesia. And I remember you said that you felt like we were slighter favorites in the singles compared to their doubles. So mm. it was more certain that they would win the doubles, but they still had some chances in the singles. And I guess that's exactly what happened uh, when mm. we played them. I was I was really really impressed with uh, Christy that he was able to find that level in the match against you because I don't think I'm offending anyone by saying he has not been at his best for for quite some time we didn't see him play well at all at the Olympics I don't think he played well particularly well in the the first few matches this tournament I know he won a long match against uh, uh, the Malaysian guy the day before but I didn't Mm -hmm. feel like it was the level we've seen him at before so I was I was very impressed to see that he was able to suddenly find that in a huge match against you yeah. with a full crowd uh, supporting us. So uh, I think he really uh, he really stands out as a uh, like a big game player. He uh, he he's done it before in, in big matches as well. I felt going into that match that it was like a 50-50 match. Mm-hmm. I mean, before before that match yesterday, uh, me versus him. We've played each other seven times, mm. and he has won four, mm. and I won three. Mm. So, um, yeah. But of course, having in mind the 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 current um, current form, the current form of mm. me and him, people were maybe favoring me a little bit more than him. But I saw it as a as a totally equal match. Mm. Um, I respect his game a lot. I know he's a tough player to beat. And we also ended up playing 100 minutes. I think that's <laughs> yeah, a yeah. new record for, for myself, personally. Yeah, I read that he said it was also a record for him. Now. Yeah. His old record was against Chen Long. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. So, um, yeah, but, but that, that, that is, that's why I believe that they were the favorites going into the match because they have two matches where they are such big favorites, mm. but the men's singles are um, very, very equal. Mm. So yeah. we have to, you know... We have to win three matches that is extremely tough for us to mm. win. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense for you, it I, I think it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, like, with the roster that we put out, obviously, on paper, I was not a favorite against uh, Ostavito. No. He is the higher-ranked player. Uh, obviously, if we had put Gemke in, if you look at the rankings, we yeah. would be favorites in that one. But even if you put Gemke in on me, that would also still be a, a 50-50 match. One of the things that really hurts me is, um, of course, there's there's plenty of things that is uh, extremely tough to swallow. Mm. Um, but one of the things is that I I really wanted to to see you in that fifth <laughs> match. I really, yeah. I real because I I I, I, wanted, little, I, I li- wanted that too. I literally <laughs> have no idea if you could win or not. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, it's just me being honest, but I would have loved to see you in that fifth yeah. match. What what was your feelings like if you were going to play? Did you have a good feeling? What is your have you played him before? And yeah, well, it, it's gonna sound arrogant, but and it's easy to say sitting here, but I had no doubt in my mind that I was gonna win. Like okay. yeah, I I know <laughs> it sounds arrogant, uh, but I I I've been preparing for that match for so long. I uh, I've always had this idea and feeling that if we would get to play Indonesia I would get to play that third singles okay. uh, and I knew it was going to be Rustavito even s- ever since I beat him in uh, in Thailand back in January uh, I, I was thinking about how I was going to do it again um, okay. and I felt like when I won that match in Thailand that was also uh, the proof the coaches needed to have to select me for the team um, I felt like I proved at that point that I, I'm capable of beating uh, some of the guys that I need I need to beat to to help the team. Um, of course, I don't know if I was gonna win or no. not, but I just I had a great feeling uh, yeah. going into the match. I've been watching so much video of uh, Rostevi, okay. <laughs> uh, both from before this tournament, but also all his Thomas Cup matches I've been watching. Um, okay. So I felt like I now it hurts even more yeah i felt like i knew what i had to do but one thing is knowing what you need to do and it's a completely different thing going out there in court and just doing it and obviously i can get hit by nerves as well Mm. uh, in that situation 
even though I've been in it before, I'm I'm sure that it would uh, be very very special to to be in court at home with a full crowd. Yeah. It, it it was yeah. special for sure. It it might also be a possibility that he has also been preparing. Probably, <laughs> maybe probably. maybe he yeah. had the same feeling that he was hundred yeah. percent sure that he was going to beat you. Yeah, that's but also why I say I don't know that I was no, going to no, beat him. But no. I yesterday I didn't have any doubt. No. Yeah. But um, we'll we'll never find out. Hopefully, you you will get to use your, I mean your your knowledge and all the the preparations you have uh, done towards facing yeah, I mean, uh, Ho- hopefully you will face in, in face him in in, in, in some tournament <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and but i hope what, that you what? will get your ass kicked <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad that would be bad but it's for sure one thing that i'm like i'm never gonna um what do you call that like uh, forgive you for. <laughs> like i'm gonna just hold you accountable for that loss forever uh, yeah it's and ever it's totally fair and ever. it's totally fair i'll yeah. just try to to live with it and um <laughs> yeah bounce back at some point ah <sighs> guys this is a tough episode to to record <laughs> it really is but um what else about the thomas cup uh well we can go into how unbelievably crazy victor axelson is mm-hmm. yeah we can do that he lost one game against Crystal Popov. Yeah. And apart from that one game, he just looked like an absolute beast. Yeah. He did. And especially in the final, I was really um I was really impressed with how calm he seemed on, on court. Mm. Uh I I I had to warm up for my own match, so I only watched the first half of the first set. Mm. And um he just looked like extremely calm. I could maybe sense a little bit of nerves, mm. but it it wasn't affecting his game at all. Mm. And um, yeah, he he just found the for me to see. It looked like he found the 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 right. Um, how do you say that? Uh, spinning snowball. Hmm. Yeah, just the right like the s- right mood. Yeah, for, mood for the state occasion. of mind. Yeah. And, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's a Danish word for it. We can't translate. Sorry. Right. Uh, and that impressed me a lot yeah. because it was a uh, you know, I I can imagine that it's not easy to to go on as as the first match mm-hmm. every time and and you know, and also because he can basically only disappoint like everyone expects that that he's winning and yeah, he's playing top players like Ginting who also proved in this tournament that that he's uh, playing some of his best uh, when he beat uh, Lishi Jia in that quarterfinal played really mm-hmm. well yeah and uh, yeah. I wouldn't say I was nervous for that match uh, against uh, Victor, but I think it is. <laughs> it is pretty impressive that he just uh, it is. beats him uh, so convincingly. Definitely, uh, it's really impressive. Um, what about Momota? Yeah, did, did you watch a lot of his games? I think it was it was fun to follow the the, the matches between uh, Kento Momota and Lee Sijia. Mm. Uh, not only this one they played here, but also the the the, the two matches that they played in Finland. So yeah, yeah. they've played each other three times in a few weeks here, and it's been interesting to follow. Um, think no, I was about to say that every match has been a little bit different, but two of them was kind of like the same, right? Mm. The first one they played, Momota won quite easily mm. in straight games. I actually don't remember this. I think so I think that w- I think that was the first game they played in Finland. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lishijia didn't look like he had the the patience, mm. and he wasn't. Oh, yeah, that's he, right. He that's wasn't right. really yeah. willing to, you know, play the long rallies. Yeah. And um, but then it that totally changed in the in the second game, mm. and he ended up winning it. And it looked like he was about to do it in the in the third uh, match they played. Mm. Um. But uh, ended up losing twenty two twenty in the in the third game. So two amazing badminton players, uh, very different styles. Mm. Um, but uh, but well, yeah. What do you think about Momota losing to Hio again? Like I, I didn't see that match. No, I didn't see it either. But I I have to say that I was actually quite shocked that yeah. that he lost again. Yeah. Because I, I was one of the one of the persons that believed his loss at the Olympics was because of nerves. I, I didn't really think that he had moved his game to a completely different level, but I think we saw some signs in uh, Finland at the Sudirman Cup that he maybe also had uh, moved his game to a new level. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was playing some really good matches, uh, but I, I still 
really did not expect him to go in there and uh, and just beat Moto one more time and do it in straight games once again. But wasn't it the day after Kento and Lee Sijia had that crazy uh, match? Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. So there is there is a chance that he was yeah. maybe a little bit tired after after that match. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. Yeah, we don't know much about it as we didn't. No, I didn't see it, but I was really surprised as well. Mm. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, it's fun to have Kento back. Mm. I mean, and uh, I'm I I I I believe that he's going to be better and better Mm. and better and gain more confidence as he just gets to play a little bit more. Um, But I'm also curious to see how he's gonna develop his game because. I don't think he can just now come back and regain the old form and play the exact same way he did before. Like I think he will have to come up with something new. Also because he's to me he's kind of lost this aura that was around him that he was unbeatable mm-hmm. and his defense was basically unbreakable. Yeah. I don't think anyone really of the top players has that feeling when they play him now. So I think he needs to come up with with something new and as he is a absolute top top player i'm sure that he will but i'm just yeah curious to see what it's going to be but it, it's interesting to see if he's going to be as dominant as he was mm. um, because i think it's fair to say that there's a lot of players who has um raised their level a mm. lot uh, mm. victor axelson in- mm. included mm. Lee Sijia, mm. um maybe myself mm. too guys oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see yeah. if he can, you know, regain the. He's still number one in the world, but mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I I don't think that anyone right now will say that he's the best in the world. Mm. I think everyone would would mention Victor Axelsen right now. So I would definitely say that. Yeah, 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 for sure. And it's it's going to be, yeah, really interesting to follow his um if he will, you know, regain his confidence. Mm. That that's I feel like every time you interview. Some of these guys, they always talk about confidence. Yeah. It's always yeah, um, yeah, yeah. if they lost, then they just needed confidence. <laughs> if they win, they confidence yeah, are back. So uh, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, speaking of Moto, I have one thing that I we need to discuss. I, I've seen we some, need to discuss. We need to discuss hey. it because I've seen some guys uh, ask us on social media actually. Okay. About Momota's match against Shiyuki, and this is a controversial one. Because Shiyuki, he pulled out, he lost the first game 22-20. And then at 25 in the second game, he decided to withdraw. And that was here here during the Thomas Yeah, Cup. here in the uh, semifinal yesterday between uh, China and Japan in the first match. So yeah. instead of just playing the final rally, he just decided to pull out. And he said in an interview with Badminton Europe that doing by doing so, pulling out feel like technically he didn't lose the match so that was kind of his official explanation mm-hmm. well, what, what do you make of that um but but it, do you think that that was like a joke or because yeah, I'm, I'm i'm not sure i actually asked victor uh, today mm-hmm. to be sure that the translation wasn't bad or something uh, that that was actually what he said and, mm-hmm. and and victor confirmed that 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 is what he's saying but yeah i'm not sure if it's a joke or not but i'm just thinking like at 25 no matter how injured you are and it's not like he, he cannot move at all he can still walk why not just let momoto make a serve mm. let it drop to the floor yeah. and then say thanks and the match is over because even if he tries to tell himself that technically he didn't lose by pulling out obviously he did lose yeah yeah for sure yeah. it seems extremely weird to me <laughs> i i really have no idea why why you would do that no. um yeah i i I I have no explanation for why you would do that. No. I really have no idea. So. <laughs> it's strange. It's just strange. It's a weird, yeah. weird situation. <laughs> yeah, I, it is. I saw the interview with the uh, Momota after the match as well, uh, where uh, the the journalist from Badminton Europe is asking him if he thinks it's fair play and uh, yeah, what he makes of the situation. And you can just see that Momota he he doesn't know what to say. Like no, he, no. he's thinking so much about how to <laughs> how to answer that question because. He doesn't want to offend anyone and uh, like no. he's a polite guy and that's also why i find it even more strange that i don't see shiyuki as a uh, a guy who's unsporting in his behavior no. in in any way i actually find him quite uh, respectful always uh, so so i wouldn't think that he's doing it to be unsportsmanlike in any way but that to me that's how it comes out 
Yeah. It looks like he just doesn't want to give Mimosa that win. Uh, yeah. It just seems ridiculous, but and protect himself from from a loss or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Like. But uh, yeah, I also read somewhere that that he was discussing things with his coach um, previous a few points before. So was there like in in the interval he was like you know doing something with his arms and just seemed a little. Yeah, Victor Svensson from our or? team said that uh, during the coaching, uh, he, he didn't want to listen to the coach at all. He was just standing in the middle of the court while the coach was trying to say stuff to him. So maybe there was something going on between them. Uh, okay, that's yeah. weird. And he's obviously also injured. He put up some photos on his, uh, I don't know if it's his Instagram. Maybe he put it up on Weibo and then okay. it was posted on, on Instagram where he has blisters on his uh, foot and okay, uh, yeah. it, it doesn't look good. So he, he is injured for sure. And obviously when he's down 25, we know there's something wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying that it, it's it's strange pulling out at the actual point he did. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and he 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 wasn't selected the next day for mm. he, he didn't play today uh, yeah. in the final. So yeah, I guess there's something wrong. But will yeah, that's when he put up those photos to explain okay. why he wasn't uh, yeah wasn't playing today. I think he's been he, he has been struggling with blisters in the past. Mm. I'm quite sure. Yeah, I think you're right. So it would be. Uh, I'm uh, curious to see if he actually plays this week. Yeah, in, uh, that might go. I was about to say that, and he's going to face a big cyclist in the first round. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we'll have to wait and see. But but also Shiyuki is is also a player who's. I don't think he has reached the same level, mm. um, as uh, as he as he had when before he he got his ankle injury, mm. which he actually got against me out in. Yeah. In Indonesia. Jakarta in 2019, mm. um, twisted his ankle, and and ever since that he he has not been the same player mm. either. Mm. Um, Fully agree. So, yeah, it says something about that. It's really really tough to get back at this level of uh, of men singles right now. If you're out for a long while. Did you see um, where I slipped in the in the match against India yeah, against, against Sai Pranith? Pranith? Yeah. Uh, guys, I almost died here a few <laughs> days ago. Uh, I'm so lucky that I still have a knee today. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I can explain the situation, but I was, I made a, a cut from the forehand side, cross court, and then I was uh, running to the short backhand side, and then my foot just, yeah, we and almost, I, and I slipped, and and my leg was like, you know, when it's over, yeah, over stretched, yeah, yeah over stretching. Yeah. And I just felt something in my knee, and I was like, "No, no, 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 no uh, this yeah. is not good." Um, but then a few minutes after, it it was okay. I got up and tried to move around, and it felt okay. But I got a huge um, shock. Yeah. yeah, I was so scared right there. We, in the we got that on the uh, in the stands as well, <laughs> the the entire team, because yeah. we we really did not need to lose that match. No. We didn't want to go all the way uh, against uh, India to the fifth match. No. Not that we didn't believe in Gemke, but we knew that uh, he was playing Samir Wame and he was down 3-0 uh, head to head. So yeah. that that would have been a, mm. a nerve wracking uh, one yeah. to get into. But that was a good team match for us. It was a good team yeah. match. A good effort yeah. from the team. Well, we don't remember that really well right now. No, so. we only remember the loss. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Just jumping back to the to to the match against Indonesia real mm. quick. Um, did you expect to be selected for the team? As the third man single? Uh, I don't know if I expected it, but I was hoping for it. And I also believe that there was a really good chance I would be selected. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, our coach, Kenneth, he believes I uh, I have a way of getting under the skin mm-hmm. of the Indonesians. Uh, they, they don't really like to play me. Uh, for some reason uh, I played Ginting once beat him uh, obviously I have the memory of, of beating uh, Mustafa in that final in, in 2016 mm-hmm. I've beaten Rustavito twice uh, yeah two out of two uh, the only guy I haven't really uh, had a lot of success against is uh, Christy yeah uh, also used to beat uh, Simon Santoso when I played him when okay. he was still active um, so yeah I, I think he just he believes that uh, they, they do not like playing me and that's also why I, I believe that that was a good chance I, I, I would play interesting but, uh, yeah I wouldn't say I expected it because uh, I think Kenneth also believes that Gimke can win those yeah. matches um, but I was th- just thinking that maybe he you, he prepped you like a few weeks before saying that 
if we're going to face Indonesia, I I want you to be ready. I think this is w- the match where you can make a difference. Uh. Yeah, well, he's definitely said to me that I needed to stay ready, and it it could be a possibility I would play against Indonesia. He never promised me anything, and uh, he said it also depends on how the tournament develops. Obviously, had we played against India the day before, and Gemke had just uh, blown uh, where am I out of the court. I'm sure he would go with him again mm, because then yeah. he's in a good rhythm and, and stuff like that. So obviously he didn't promise me anything, no. but he did prep me uh, before saying that this is the match that you need to prepare for. And that's also why it is the match that I've been thinking about and I've been uh, watching video and stuff to, to yeah. be ready for. I'm 100% sure had I played that match, had I won and we made the final, I don't think I would have played the final. I think it would have been Gimke again. Uh, yeah no matter if we had to play Japan or, or China, because he, he was our third choice and uh, he should be, I think. Um, but yeah, that one match, I think, kind of just felt like I was uh, I was the better fit uh, yeah, for that one. Makes sense. Yeah. So um, I don't really think that we can talk much more about the Thomas Cup right now. I mean... I don't feel the need to. No, it's, <laughs> it's uh, as mentioned before in this episode, it's, it's a tough one to do right now. Um, so uh so let's just keep it short and uh and i think we've shown enough respect to the indonesian team now of right of course we have huge kudos to, to china for, uh, and to japan also yeah. congratulations to to china um they won the uber cup and and mm. placed second in, in the in the thomas cup dominated the olympics they are, dominated the back. olympics and also won the sudirman cup a few weeks yeah. back so yeah. still an incredible um strong nation when it comes to badminton um always yeah. performs extremely well at i actually thought about that earlier today that there's been a lot of talk the past few years if japan is challenging for uh, like being the the most dominant yeah the most dominant team and i, I think we've really uh, seen the past uh, few months that they are still a step or two behind the uh, behind china, behind china. Yeah. yeah and japan japan placing uh, placing third um really strong team as well mm. missed maybe some of their best men's doubles since they have retired just uh, recently after the yeah. olympics um also missing some girls in the uber cup yeah i wasn't there and they missed no. some women's doubles too no yeah so um so yeah that's it guys congratulations to all the the winners the congratulations to to us maybe also a little bit yeah and we are coming for gold there's there's only like eight months until the next Thomas Cup. Yeah. So uh, I have now I have participated in Thomas Cup twice, um, and I have two bronze medals. Yeah. How many times have you participated? Five. Five, and you have three bronze. Uh, three bronze and one gold. One gold. And one quarterfinal. When was when was that? The Twenty fourteen in India. We lost to Malaysia three one. Yeah, was That's good. Bad. That's, That's also bad. the uh, worst Thomas Cup team I've been part of in terms of uh, team spirit. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Should we get into that, or should we just close? Let's it? save that for another episode. Let's save that for yeah. another yeah. episode. Yeah. Maybe when we get some of the players who was actually on that team. Yeah. Back in fourteen, we yeah. we can yeah. we can discuss that, talk about that. That's a deal. Um, <clears throat> I actually talked with uh, oh no, I texted a little bit with uh with Lee Sijia. Yeah. And I asked him if he wanted to do a podcast at some point. So I think th- I think that's going to happen too. Yeah. Really exciting player and a uh, great and guy. Great guy too. And before that episode, we need to agree if we call him Lisi Jia or Lisi Jia. Yeah, uh, he, he, I, mean, I guess he can tell us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they say Lisi Jia. Lisi Jia? Yeah. What did I say? Lisi Jia? Jia, yeah. Okay. That's Li- what we say in Denmark, but... Lisi Jia. Lisi Jia. <coughs> yeah, and I've also been promising the episode with Ginting. So I think that's also it will happen on happen. Bali. That could be a great place to do it. And, all, yeah. and as mentioned before, Oliver is joining on on Bali. So, by the way, did you see the? I saw something on um, this Indonesian page. Uh, I think it's a Twitter page. Mm. Badman talk. Badman oh, talk. Yeah. Badman talk. Yeah. Is it Badman talk? Yeah. I think it's Badman talk. Yeah. Um, and they were talking about the facilities on yeah, the uh, yeah. on the place where we're going to stay in Bali. I think and it's the Western Resort we're staying at. A resort with private beach and, and, and stuff. Yeah, they're arranging a bunch of stuff. Uh, 
uh, food stalls like uh, street food and uh, some uh, open air cinema and uh, st- wow, yeah, water nice. sports and uh, yeah yoga classes yoga so, classes yeah, i think uh, that's going to be good for all three of us yeah and oliver is really gonna uh, <laughs> have some golden footage <coughs> of, uh, of all of us yeah we're also going to make some incredible vlogs from yeah. from the bali yeah that's from up the, to you guys the, i'm not part the of bali that. like no you you only take part in the podcast <laughs> yeah. um well that's going to be fun yeah hopefully we can do a podcast out there too um, but I, maybe I should just stop mentioning that we plan to do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Just maybe just start to do it. So the, the, fan, the fans will get annoyed. Um, Denmark Open. It's on. Are you excited? Right now I'm just really tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's also almost uh, 11. Yeah, honestly, I am, uh, right now I'm not very excited. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm still too disappointed about Tom. Are you going to play? You're going to play Wednesday. I'm playing Wednesday. So yeah, you have I'm a few days to. I have a few days and get I'm it out of your system. And I also refocus. guarantee when I get on court, I want to play, and I think there's going to be a good crowd as well, and uh, I will enjoy it for sure. But uh, right now, uh, I would rather go home. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> do you but know who is who is the? Um, how do you say it? the the defending champion? Uh, yeah, I. Do remember that last year, the event was like it was ridiculously bad. Like it was, it was kind of the level like an international series, or may, uh, maybe challenge something like <laughs> that. But yeah, it was this guy. No, I don't know who won. No, uh, uh, Gemke. Gemke won. Gemke, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Gemke, uh, he won the fight. No. Oh yeah, he should have won. No, yeah, he I think won. I, I think he won. He should have won. Yeah, yeah he should. He should have won. That's for <laughs> he sure. He should have won. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, that's another one of the matches where you actually ended up having cramps. No, I didn't. I you was didn't? just close. I was very, very close. Oh, okay. okay. And also, because P- that actually one thing we need to talk about that we haven't talked about from the Thomas Cup. Can you just explain all the viewers why you suddenly <laughs> made a clear that didn't <laughs> even reach the middle of the court at sixteen fifteen in the. F- a third game against the I think it was uh, six, 16 all a 16 all against Christy you suddenly hit a clear and it, it goes like mid court well why did that happen oh so guys um yeah long story short I I, I simply <laughs> got a cramp in my thumb <laughs> I got a I got a cramp in this you know, n- not in the thumb but this muscle that is between the thumb and and uh, and this finger yeah. the pointing pointing <laughs> finger <laughs> index finger the pointy the pointy finger the one that you point with <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I I got a cramp in that muscle right there and um it was like my my thumb was just squeezing around the grip <laughs> And I wasn't really able to <laughs> to change my grip, and uh, that was a, a horrible situation and a terrible, terrible thing to happen at that moment. Um, if you didn't notice it, you should go check it out on YouTube and. Uh, and the worst forward, uh, worst thing about it is that Jonathan actually broke his string in that <laughs> yeah, rally, yeah. but I couldn't really capitalize on it because I was just stuck with one grip. <laughs> and uh, I, I was watching it on a screen in a in a room. Uh, I was trying to yeah. Uh, just relax a little bit and not watch the match in in the arena so i was just watching on a screen and i was so pissed at you because i I thought (laughs) that it was because the his string broke that you were just trying to play safe yeah uh and i hate it when people do that because i feel like it gives the guy with the broken string a Mm. better chance of actually not making mistakes Mm. and it's only afterwards that i found out that you you actually have a cramp so you you couldn't do anything and i was like no what is he doing i've I've tried it one time before in the past and um and at that time it happened because it was in a team match um Mm. but but uh, me and oliver we were carrying uh, a, a big photo from a store up to mm. my apartment and we were just carrying it for a little while and mm. you know our hands and underarms got really tired <laughs> so during the during the the match uh, i got cramp in, in my fingers so i, I wasn't <laughs> able to it's imp- impossible to play yeah. with cramps in your in your <laughs> fingers <laughs> and this is the second time that i've tried it and uh, yeah it's a f- strange place to, it, to get it, your it cramp is. after an hour and 40 minutes it's your thumb yeah that can't it's play the, anymore it's the thumb. <laughs> but i didn't actually 
I mean, I've been struggling a little bit with with cramps uh, in in the past, and people think that I got a really bad cramps this time. Mm. I actually didn't. Mm. Um, I was a uh, I was close, and there was mm. places here and there that you know was like uh, tweaking mm. a little bit, yeah, but yeah. but I didn't really get a uh, like a like, full blown no, cramp. No, I didn't. And uh, if I should play today, I was able to do that. Mm. Um, mm. And Jonathan was also able to play today. Credit to him. Yeah. Three tough matches in a row, and yeah, uh, yeah quite impressive. Also, uh, a very strong guy he is. I mean, he he his hides leg. his legs be, be behind those uh, those tights. Yeah, but he has huge massive. legs. The massive, yeah. so uh, strong, strong boy. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Jonathan, if you're watching this, um, I'm challenging challenging you for a uh, one hour and forty five minutes match <laughs> next time. So I'm uh, maybe I, here at the demo. Go. I don't know if I'm if I can face him, but uh, I don't. Well, I I am. If you both I, win all your matches, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you will of course face we can other. face each other, but <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be when it's going to be if no. it's going to be. But um, no, I'm I'm here in, at the demo I'm facing Rasmus in the first round. Rematch. Of the Rasmus final. Gemge, my 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 childhood friend, mm. and a rematch mm. from last year. Mm. Last year we played each other in the final. This year it's going to be in the first round. Which is going to be weird. Very weird. Yeah. But I'm gonna be there in the stands with my popcorn. Cheering watching. for Rasmus. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> because for you sure. cannot forgive me about the Thomas Cup. Exactly. I only wish mm. you bad things now. Ah, <sighs> damn it. Yeah, no, that's gonna be an exciting one. And obviously one of the most interesting first round matches. But to be honest Ever. I Nah, just this week. Yeah. I don't really know a lot of the matchups. I just know that Victor is supposed to play Shiyuki, but I suspect that's not gonna happen after seeing his foot and not playing at Thomas Cup final. I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, goes back home. No. But uh, hence, I think since it's also late and we've been on for like 40 minutes, we have talked about the Thomas Cup. We have congratulated the, the different countries. Um, I think we should just wrap it up here. And um, I, I hope that we can do some more episodes here from Odense Hopefully. or maybe from, from Paris next week. We're also going to do a vlogs. Oliver is, has has joined the 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 team. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of good content hopefully for you uh, the next few weeks here. And um, do you have anything to to add here before we head to bed and uh, wrap up the, wrap up this episode? And you get out of my room maybe also. <laughs> I just want to say good night. Good night, Anas. Good night, Hans.